Hey there, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. Today we're gonna to show you how to remove a bunch of unwanted distractions from your images. Now this is our second part in our series on object removal. We're going over all the tools and techniques you need to remove just about any objects from your photos. We got a great tutorial from you. From you? Nope, that's not a thing. We got a great tutorial for you. Let's jump into Photoshop. So here's our sample image. She looks great, but we've got a ton of distractions here in the background. All these power lines, all this graffiti and marks and all of this stuff. We're gonna leave all of her tattoos. We're gonna assume she wants those there, but all this little stuff here uh, is just kind of distracting. And you'll find that removing these things can just create a much cleaner photo overall, and it'll help you focus in on your subject, which after all, like that's the whole point of this sort of thing. It's just get rid of those distractions. So first thing we want to do is identify some of the easy stuff to get rid of. And this area right over here, like these little telephone wires and things like that, super easy to get rid of because basically we have a lot of clean area to sample from in this image. It's just open sky other than these telephone wires. So what we're going to do is duplicate our background layer. Start by clicking on your background layer, hit Control or Command J to duplicate that. We're gonna zoom in and I'm gonna grab my lasso tool. So we're gonna hit L for the lasso tool and let's simply just make a selection right around the thing we wanna remove. We're gonna to go to edit and then down to content aware fill. Now this actually chooses different areas of your photo like this green area that's kind of highlighted now. That's the area that it's going to choose to figure out what it's actually gonna fill it in and we have a little preview here. You obviously have a bunch of different options here. You can change the color that it looks like. So if your color is a little different from mine, that's totally okay. But basically, it's gonna figure out what is in this area and what it can fill this in. So it's gonna basically just try to get rid of that thing automatically. Now, it works really well, especially when you have relatively simple areas. So as you can see here, pretty good. So I'm gonna put this to the current layer. There we go, let's hit okay and deselect and you can see that's pretty good. We have a little bit left over, but all in all, I would say it's pretty good. Let's continue with this tool and then we can do some cleanup later if we need to. All right, edit and then content aware fill. I always recommend starting off with these like really simple automatic tools first because they'll get most of the job done. And if you need to do some cleanup after the fact, that's totally okay. So let's hit okay there again. We can see it kind of did something weird. You can always select something like that and then just do this again content to wear fill, and then there, boom, it's gone. Now there are, of course, other ways to get the job done, but to start with, we wanna just do the simplest stuff. So let's go to edit content to wear fill again. There we go, and start by removing that sort of thing. Perfect. So we're gonna move on to our next tool. As we can see, content to wear fill did a pretty good job, but I still wanna like come in here and kind of fix this up. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. I'm gonna grab my regular healing brush tool which allows me to sample a current, like a texture that I actually want and then paint right over it. So in this case, I have a little bit of like these telephone wires here. I'm gonna sample right up here by holding Alt or Option. And then I'm just gonna simply paint over those textures and it's gonna replace it with what I want. And as you can see, that's looking much, much better. You could totally do this to start with, by the way, if you want, but it's also a really nice tool to kind of fix things up. Now, here when we come to the edge, Let's try this tool again. So the regular healing brush tool, I'm gonna to sample here and then paint right over there. But when I get to the edge, it kind of blurs things up. It just kind of messes the job. So we don't wanna use the regular healing brush tool when we get close to edges. For that, the clone stamp tool is much better. So the clone stamp tool is located right under it. There we go. And it makes a direct copy of wherever you sample. So I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and sample right over here and then start simply just painting in. I'm gonna make my brush nice and small and paint in right to the edge. Same thing over here. Sample right here on the edge. I've got a little preview of where I'm gonna paint. There we go. And let's go ahead and clean that up as well. And that looks pretty good. I missed that. So let's sample it again. And I'm just gonna move it right to the right place. There we go. And make sure that looks good. Fantastic. Now here where we have all of this graffiti area you can most definitely grab your clone stamp tool if you want to. So Alt or Option to sample your area and paint it in. This is a really good technique here. There we go. Now, I would highly suggest if you're gonna clone stamp something like this, you don't always have to go like right to the edge and stop. Sometimes I'll actually paint over the edge just a little bit. 
that'll just make sure that like this selection actually completely fills the background. And then I can always come back in and mask this later on. There we go. Perfect. Sometimes it works out much better to do this rather than try to get it like perfectly stop at the edge. There we are. We'll kind of bring this in here. So Alt or Option. I'm just sampling this area and painting it in. There we go, all the way to the edge there. And you can see I'm not trying to be super, super precise with my edges here. There we go. Because I'm going to grab a layer mask here in just a second and simply just mask it in. There we are. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and click on our layer mask icon. It's right down here. It looks like a rectangle, a little circle in it. And I'm just going to paint black here on my layer mask with my brush tool. And it's going to hide these areas. And then I can hit X on my keyboard to switch back to white if I need to. So this allows me to get a really nice clean selection and still keep my edge intact. But because I kind of overpainted originally, there we go, I can make sure that anything that kind of like comes right to the edge, make sure to co completely cover up those objects. There we go. And that's looking pretty good. Now, for over in this area, we're gonna try a different tool. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna hit B and we're just gonna go with the brush tool. And believe it or not, when you have a relatively simple background like this, the brush tool can actually work really, really well. So let's hit B for the brush tool. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option to sample this color. And then I'm gonna simply just paint right over here with, you got it, the regular brush tool. I'm gonna sample a couple times as I go through this, holding Alt or Option, there we go. Sample this color and kind of painting over there. But keep in mind, it's a relatively simple background. It's out of focus. There we go. And it's one color. So the brush tool surprisingly does a really good job when it comes to this sort of thing. And then just create a layer mask just like we did before with the clone stamp tool and simply just paint it away where it covers up your subject. It's pretty amazing, right? I wanna show you guys a bunch of different tools and techniques in this series, and then you can just choose from whatever tool or technique you want for your own images, because there's no real right or wrong ways to do things in Photoshop. That's looking pretty good. Now, here on the bottom, I wanna get rid of all of these things. The best tool for this one is gonna be the Spot Healing Brush tool, because it's gonna sample other areas around the image and simply fill in these little spots. So when you have like small little, you know, areas you want to remove, the spot healing brush tool is really the way to go. And it uses the same content aware technology as content aware fill, which is what we started using at the beginning of this tutorial. Tectorial. All right. So as you can see, I'm simply just painting over these areas. I'm on a new layer. This is completely non-destructive. And it's very, very easy to get rid of this sort of thing because it samples other areas in my photo and just kind of guesses at what I want to fill this out with. And I got to say, most of the time, it guesses pretty dang well. If it doesn't do a perfect job, most of the time you just paint over it again and it'll get it on the second round. There we go. Let's go ahead and paint this over. A bunch of little paint marks right over here to kind of get rid of all this stuff. Boom, boom, boom. And you can see it's little background detail, so you don't have to like you spend a ton of time on it and make it perfect. But just getting rid of these little dots and scratches and things like that, um, what it does is just helps the viewer of the photo not focus on this stuff. So it helps them look more at your subject, which is ultimately what you want, and less at all these little details that really just kind of don't help. Now here on the edge, you can see it's kind of doing a weird job. So I'm going to hit undo a little bit. And this is where we're going to go back to the clone stamp tool. So with these tools, your clone stamp tool is always your backup. Like as you can see with the healing brush tool, I can paint that in. We get a weird result, but the clone stamp tool doesn't try to do any type of blending. It just creates a direct duplicate of wherever you sample. So in this case, I can dictate exactly what it's going to look like. There we go. Just by holding alt or option and sampling and then painting it in there. Let's go right to the edge there. Fantastic, and we are good to go. All right, I can sample this little area because it's a little bit darker, kind of like some shadow area there. There we go, and kind of blend these in as well. So fantastic tool. There we go. 
to kind of fill in this detail. And if you overpaint, like I just painted over top of that thumb, just click on your layer mask icon. <laughs> click on your layer mask icon and then go ahead and just paint it away to reveal whatever areas you want. Fantastic. And there we go. We're done with that. Let's grab a new layer. Again, this area, nice and simple. J for our spot healing brush tool. That's the keyboard shortcut. Simply paint over these areas and you're good to go. So you can see all of these little distractions, they add up to, uh, to what, you know, something that's not so little. All right, oftentimes cleaning images is not, you know, it's not something that needs to be done in one step. It's something that you can do in a bunch of little steps that's gonna make a huge, huge difference. There we go, just grabbing the clone stamp tool to remove that little area there. And Fantastic. And then let's just grab a layer mask and because I overpainted a little bit, but again, we're not worried about overpainting. It's actually better to overpaint and then mask than underpaint and not cover up the object you actually want to cover. Fantastic. All right. Well, there we go. Let's go ahead and group all those together. My plan, turn that off and on. Just make sure I got everything. I think I did. Let's go ahead and shift click all of those controller command G to group them together and we'll turn those off and on. And look at that, all of these distractions we were able to get rid of, and they help us focus on our awesome subject just a little bit better, even right up here, boom. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll send you free Photoshop tutorials like all the time. We continue to make these and we have been for years. You're gonna love them. Hit that big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget you guys can download the sample image and the PSD file on Flurm for free. Just follow the link right down below. Create custom brushes to actually paint in new objects in the background that weren't there. We create textures and walls and buildings completely from scratch and then build detail over top of that and make sure to match it perfectly so it looks photo real. This tutorial is part of a series including simple, intermediate, and advanced object removal. All of them are available on flern.com as a part of Flern Pro. Thanks again, and I'll flern you later. Bye everyone.